so shiny. Yes, so beautiful. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome back to another great video with your boy, the Savior. That's right, your daddy, your Papa Senpai is back. And if you're new to the channel, I urge you to go down below and subscribe. It takes two seconds for you guys, but that two seconds means the world to me. You have no idea. I work hard on my videos and I hope you enjoy the video I have for you today. Welcome back to the channel for the OG Sinners and if you are new, like I said, please do subscribe. You won't be disappointed if you like game reviews, retrospective content on gaming, philosophical videos and tearing down the establishment where and when I can, then you've come to the right place. Now today, I'm going to be giving you the Lord of the Rings Gollum game review. This is my early review of Gollum and oh boy, okay, this is an interesting one and I should preface this video by saying I'm a massive Lord of the Rings fan. If you haven't watched the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, then don't come at me, okay? You don't know what it's like, okay? Dedicating pretty much an entire day of your life to the Lord of the Rings. Some people might say that's excessive, but I would say that's one of the best goddamn experiences you're ever going to get because Lord of the Rings is a masterful piece of literature and entertainment. The movies are fantastic. They adapted the books so well. I am also a massive fan of the books, of course, as well. I actually got into the books after the movies, like maybe many of you have. But um, yeah, the books are actually quite different in tone compared to the movies in which they're just a lot more campy, there's a lot of singing, there's a lot of poetry, there's just a lot of uh, Tom Bombadil and oh boy, you know, big old Tom. If you hear a man's voice singing in the distance, make sure you lock your doors and whatever you do, don't let Tom Bombadil come in to your house because boy, he just can't get enough of the groping. Down west sinks the sun, soon you will be groping. Come bombardil oh, by water, wood and hill, by the reed and willow, oh, by fire, sun and moon. Hearken now and hear us, come Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. So I just wanted to say that quickly because I think it's important to recognize that People who absolutely love Lord of the Rings and the material will look at this game very differently compared to the non-Lord of the Rings fan and just the average gamer. Maybe you've watched the movies, you know, but you're not a massive fan, you don't go back and re-watch them, or you haven't read the books. If you're not a die-hard Lord of the Rings Tolkien fan, then this game is definitely a hard, hard miss, okay? And I'll say that now just to save you time. The gameplay on offer here is lackluster okay at best and i'm going to break down all of the different details further on in this the lord of the rings golem review but i think it's important to say that to save you time if you aren't a fan of lord of the rings or a casual fan you will not find enough enjoyment i think personally in golem but if you are a massive fan of lord of the rings and its story and especially the character golem and you want to see all of the little details that we, you know, hear about in the books and we actually get to experience it now, you know, by this new perspective of actually being Gollum, then, you know, that might be worth it. But otherwise, I would definitely give it a hard pass. So before I get into the lovely potatoes, the lovely golden chips of this video, okay? I'm just going to quickly say how I do my reviews because it might be different from other channels you watch. I basically give you the positives and I give you some negatives. And basically, I trust you, the audience, is intelligent enough to make up your own decision because reviews are just subjective opinions at the end of the day. And I'm pretty sure that you can make up your own opinion about this game. So that's why I like to do the positives and the negatives. I don't give a score at the end of the video. And I think the gaming industry at the moment is in a sad state of affairs with a lot of shills and a lot of corrupt industry out there 
with big outlets like IGN and bigger YouTuber channels who basically, you know, shill out a game in previews and then turn around and say, actually, it's a good game. It's all about money. Gaming industry has become marketing, all about false marketing. So be careful, never pre-order games anymore because we can't trust developers like we used to and we need to take back power as consumers with the gaming industry because at the moment it is a very grey area with what these massive studios and developers can get away with. I do think this is a strange video game idea because this would be much more suited to a small TV show or you know a small book series or something like that because Gollum isn't an interesting character to play as but as gameplay goes, it's very tedious, so I do think that on paper the core concept is very strange, but the positive, like I said, is the story, is the lore. The writing on offer here is actually well done, and it's all based around the books, okay, not the movies. So if you are a fan of the books, you will know that Gollum is actually a much more important character when it comes to Lord of the Rings and especially for Fellowship of the Ring, you will know that Gollum or Smeagol, whatever you want to call him, meets with important characters and we never get to see that but obviously in this game you are playing as Gollum so you get to see all of his little adventures, his meetings with Gandalf and you know traveling into Mordor and all of this kind of stuff. Stuff that necessarily we didn't need to see but it is cool especially when the Lord of the Rings universe is so dry at the moment and the only thing we got recently was an absolute dumpster fire, woke, virus, hive mind, agenda, hit piece basically to destroy Tolkien's, you know, wonderful creation. So it's nice to have something that actually cares about the source material. So if you view it as purely a narrative experience, then you will actually find enjoyment. But this is a video game. And as gamers, we expect, you know, some level of quality, <laughs> of course, when it comes to the game. And sadly, this feels very, very outdated. So yes, the story does take place around the Fellowship of the Ring. And you will get to see some important and interesting characters. And they are all done nicely okay they are all done very well and I will say that the voice acting for the most part is pretty good but there's so many other issues so now let's just get into the gameplay okay and this game is all about stealth gameplay and wall climbing basically think of God of War and other games like Uncharted this is pretty much Naughty Dog climbing simulator the game with basic bare bone stealth gameplay elements to keep it somewhat fresh and when I say that the stealth gameplay is bare bones that is being generous okay most games most triple-a open world games you know usually have some kind of stealth mechanic baked in it and of course it's only a small added feature of the gameplay because having a whole game based around that tiny you know shitty mechanic to begin with would be terrible because I think we can all agree that stealth in most games are terrible. They are absolute just what the hell. I mean, it's just classic modern day gaming 101. Hide in some bushes. Oh, oh, I'm hiding in some bushes and I'm magically invisible now. Wow, I'm using a magical potion, I guess, and no one can see me. You know, some games absolutely take the piss with this where your head can be clearly visible but because you're in a magic bush whoa the magic bush oh the magic bush it actually transports you to a new dimension and that's why the enemies can't see you it makes perfect sense modern day games have a lot wrong with them i would say and in older games especially older stealth games they would actually require some level of intelligence and some level of actual you know, critical thinking when it comes to stealth. For example, the old Splinter Cell games. I remember that being so goddamn difficult and you would have to basically be perfect with your timing, staying within the shadows, 
you know, shooting off the lights, that would feel hardcore like a goddamn stealth game. Nowadays, it's just this bullshit, you know, hiding in a magic bush or using x-ray vision to see what's around every single corner because everyone has magical x-ray powers. Because modern day developers don't trust gamers to have any type of actual independence or any capable brain power whatsoever anymore. So that's why we get all of these half-baked mechanics like x-ray vision. <coughs> Very difficult to find an interesting and unique stealth game nowadays because most of them in the AAA gaming space copy the formula that Assassin's Creed set years and years ago and they've just kind of stuck with it because they think, hey, that's good enough. Any third person game nowadays have the same stealth mechanics and they are all tedious, okay? Chuck a rock and magically the AI will be so stupid enough that they'll just go and inspect it no matter what, even if there's a dead body right next to them or even if you're standing right there. Basic, and basic AI has been a staple in the industry for a long time now, but like I said, it's usually forgivable because it's a tiny feature baked into a much larger pie normally when it comes to games. But if you want a good stealth, you know, experience, you have to look back at older games when developers would actually, you know, innovate and respect player intelligence. So, sorry for a little tangent, I just really don't like stealth games anymore because they just kind of lost for fun for me. There's a few of them that are still good nowadays, but most of them, like I said, copy that mechanic. And this game, like I said, it's that boring shitty mechanic of stealth gameplay and that's it and Naughty Dog Climbing, okay? Naughty Dog Climbing, if you don't know what I mean by that, is basically these third-person action games that, you know, we all have nowadays. Obvious, painted bullshit, because I'm disabled, I'm a modern-day gamer, I'm a goblin gooby brain, and I can't think for myself, so uh, I've got to look around. Oh no, I don't have x-ray vision, what am I gonna do? Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Calm down, calm down, savior. I see some painted cum splatter. That must be where I need to go. That's where I know. That's how I... <laughs> That's how I know how to climb. This is climbable. Oh, thank you. Thank you, developers, for telling me that this is climbable. <laughs> That's what I mean by Naughty Dog climbing. That's what I mean by Naughty Dog verticality climbing gameplay. You know, God of War... The new God of War I'm talking about. So many games copy that type of formula because it's very obvious and that's fine, again, usually because it's baked in with a massive, massive game which has so much else going on. But Gollum literally has those two mechanics, okay? Let that sink in. Gollum, the Lord of the Rings Gollum, has shitty stealth gameplay that I just talked about and it has Naughty Dog Climbing. That is the only thing this game has when it comes to goddamn gameplay, okay? And some puzzles, which I'll talk about more later. So, yeah, let that sink in. That's pretty bad. Now, what I would like to see is they went the Zelda Breath of the Wild route and actually gave you some agency. Imagine a Golem stealth game where you can climb around anywhere that you want and you actually have to think and use your brain and there would be a lot of you know, tension because you would have to manage your stamina and stuff like that. Yes, you do actually have to manage your stamina, there is a stamina gauge baked in, but because it's all handholdy, it doesn't matter whatsoever. You know, you can't sprint infinitely, or you can't, you know, climb forever, but it doesn't matter because it's all formulaic. So the other negative is the AI is completely brain dead, okay? Take your average Starbucks employee and bash them over the head continuously and you pretty much got the AI in the Lord of the Rings Gollum. It's very very unsophisticated. Like I said, stealth mechanics are broken on paper because they will just stand right next to you and they can't magically see you. Sometimes they actually glitch out and they just completely go AWOL and the pathfinding is just terrible. Um, so the AI does have a lot of problems I would say. And occasionally, this is a positive, I guess, but it's pretty much a negative. Sometimes Gollum can actually do a stealth takedown of the enemies, but it's very rare and it's very boring. You just click a button, but... So, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a shame. But, um, you know, I always like to give my thoughts and opinions on 
what features the game should have included to try and help developers in the future and just to keep the creativity alive. So I think what they could have done here is actually, you know, have some kind of mini game where the player actually has a chance to fail doing a stealth takedown because that would have added some level of tension and some level of player agency. So yeah, but pretty much the stealth gameplay is very, very minimal. If you are enjoying the video so far, I would appreciate if you gave the video a like because that does actually help out the magical robots that run YouTube. And also, I will just quickly say, if you would be honored, I'm very dyslexic. I'd also like to say that if you do join the channel, if you do join the Savior Empire as a member, you actually get extra content. I've got a whole playlist of extra videos only available to members and that would support this show. So, hey, so now let's get in to some positives because goddamn, so far in the Lord of the Rings Gollum game review, we've been pretty negative and that's sadly because a lot of it is negative but there are some positives. So what is good about the gameplay? Well, you actually have two personalities, of course, Gollum and Smeagol, and the developers actually tap into this, and because this is a narrative-focused game, and it's all about the story, there are actually interesting story choices that you can make. Now, think of games like Telltale, and Telltale are known for making some great story-driven games with some player choice, some of their games are kind of a miss. Some of their games are absolutely just absolute masterpieces like The Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us. And I would say that Gollum taps into that type of gameplay style because yes, it is the same game for everyone. You will be going through the same locations and the choices you make won't deviate the game massively, but some levels will be impacted by the choices that you make and some characters can actually die and you know basically you will get different interactions and a personal flavor which I feel is a nice touch and there is some moral dilemma because of course Smeagol being the nice humble side the kind of original side of Gollum slash Smeagol and Gollum being the twisted you know obsessed murderer so there are some interesting moral choices to be made nothing groundbreaking like Mass Effect or something like that this is more like, you know, the original Fable game where it's very simplistic, where it's either good or bad, there is no nuance, but it is still nice to have. So the final negatives I just want to touch on for the Lord of the Rings Gollum review are basically the graphical style, okay? I don't care about graphics, I don't personally think this looks bad graphically, but what is important to me is art style. You know, I don't care about the modern day gaming trend of everyone being obsessed with photorealistic graphics. What's more important is art style. You cannot kill art style, that is timeless. And sadly, I do think that the art style is a little bit of a miss here. Now, the art direction, the level design is nice and the environments are very detailed and they are nice to look at. But what I'm talking about more specifically is the character models and especially Gollum himself and just the kind of graphical approach they took because it does make things feel like they are made out of clay in some ways. Gollum looks a little bit... <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. So I think it's important to end on a few positives because even though the stealth gameplay is lackluster, they do break it up a little bit with some puzzles and thank god the puzzles themselves aren't handholdy like some of the other aspects in the game, they aren't too simplistic and you actually have to use your brain and the game won't exactly tell you exactly what to do, which is refreshing. And the final positive is the voice acting. Like I said, for the most part, I think it's done nicely and you can soak in the Middle Earth atmosphere and it is very lore accurate. So people who are absolutely diehard fans of the story, I think will still enjoy this as long as you go in with those expectations because if you go in expecting a fun game, you might be disappointed. And there are some bugs, there are some issues like light flickering and like I said, the AI being rather broken. So that is my review of The Lord of the Rings Gollum. I do hope you enjoyed this The Lord of the Rings Gollum review. 
and I would appreciate it if you left me a comment because I love to get to know you guys. I love the community that I'm building. Make sure you do subscribe so I can keep up the fight against the BS and the lies in this modern world. I would appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.